This woman does not exist, neither does this cute looking dog. They were all created by AI simply by using text to describe what they look like. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can do the same for yourself. Hello everyone and welcome to another awesome tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be diving into the world of AI generated art using a tool called Mid Journey. If you've never heard of this tool before, just the way ChatGPT does an awesome job with text-based content, Midjourney is arguably one of the best AI tools out there for generating images. And in this video, I'm going to be walking you through step-by-step -step how to use the tool, as well as giving you some tips and tricks that you can use to get the best looking images from this tool. So let's get straight into it. So to access the tool, you want to head over to midjourney.com. And then it's this very interesting looking website. But if you scroll down, you're going to see a little button that says join beta. So if you click on that, it's going to take you to the Midjourney Discord server. Now you can only access the tool using the Discord server. There's no any other way to do that. So you'd have to create a Discord account if you don't already have one. As of the time of recording this video, when you sign up for a new account, they give you 25 free images to generate for free. After that, you will need one of their subscriptions and I'll walk you through how to subscribe towards the end of this video. All right, so I've created an account and this is what that looks like. So it's not the most user-friendly tool out there. Uh, hopefully after the beta, maybe they're gonna create a, a web-based app that's more intuitive to use. But if you look through to your left, right here on the side, you have the different channels. This is where you discuss different kinds of things. And this is also how you access the AI tool that generates the images. Right now we are on the announcement channels and it just has general announcements from the Meet Journey team. Um, if you wanna get started generating your images, what you wanna do is find one of these newbie rooms. So you see there's several of them and you can use either. It doesn't really matter. So just click on any one of those. Uh, once you have a subscription, you can also access the chat bot itself directly. But for now, we'll use one of these newbie rooms. So what you want to do is simply type slash imagine. The very first time you run this, it's going to ask you to accept the TOR. So that's going to be buried somewhere. So just click on the green button. And once you accept that, you're going to be ready to create your first AI generated image. So let's do a quick example. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to type backslash imagine and you pretty much just type whatever it is that you have in your imagination. So for our very first example, I'm going to say imagine a monkey wearing an Iron Man suit in an alien invasion because this is Iron Man. And if it's an alien invasion, it's probably happening in New York. For some reason, all these alien invasions only happen in New York. Once you hit enter, uh, your prompt is going to get buried in this sea of order prompt for everybody trying to also generate with it using the tool. Uh, but what you want to do is just scroll down and look for this orange bar to the right. Wherever you see that, that is your own personal prompt. So that should make it a little bit easy for you to locate um, your prompt. So this is currently loading. It takes about a minute or so to run and you have this little percentage sign um, as it runs. And as you see it building, you see it coming to life slowly and eventually it's going to get to high contrast and high details. Now, once your image generates, it might disappear again. Uh, it goes back to its actual original place in the queue. So you might have to scroll back and forth to find it. An easier way to always find your prompt is by simply going to your inbox and that's to your top right corner. So if you click on that, you will have and go to mentions. This would have all uh, the prompts that you are the one who have added. And this is the most easiest way for you to find it. And you can simply click on the jump button right there. And that's going to navigate you back to where your prompt is. So this is the easiest way to find it. So another way to also see everything that you generate is to go to midjourney.com forward slash app and every artwork that you have generated on the platform always show here. So this is probably a good time to mention that everything you create using Midjourney, even when you chat with the bot privately, it's publicly available. I guess this is their way of kind of policing how people use the system, but so you just want to be careful the kinds of things you post there because whatever you generate is going to be available in the community page for everybody to see. Now, let's jump back to our original image here. By default, every time you generate a new image, it generates four versions of that and it's stored in a grid system. This is image number one, two, three, and four, respectively. And there are several things you can do with that. At the top right here, you see the numbers U1 through U4. This just helps you to upscale the image. Uh, the initial version of what it generates is just a little a preview of this. So this is not high resolution. If you need a higher resolution, you can upscale it by clicking one of the use with the corresponding number of the image. Another thing you can do is generate a different variation of what it has previewed using the V1 through V4. So for example, let's say we wanted a different variation of uh, this number three right here. So I'm just going to go back 
and click on v3 so it's going to generate a different variation of that again that gets buried in all of the chats so the best way to locate it is to head over to uh, my inbox and that way i will be able to see it and i can jump to it right there so and that's currently generating we'll just allow that to finish generating all right, and it's done. So as you can see, it's given us different flavors of the same image with little variations so that we can pick what works best for us. So let's say I like uh, the number four image and I want to get a higher resolution of that. I will need to upscale it. So let's head over back to the chat. I'll jump again to where it was. And then I'm going to click on U4 to upscale the number four image. Again, this gets buried in the chats like always, but it's going to take a couple of minutes to run depending on the load on the servers. And once this is done, boom, you have right here your high resolution version of the generated image. And you can take this and go make your next movie poster of your own version of the Avengers Ape Edition. So you can see we did all of this simply by just typing some few text to describe to the AI what to generate. And we have a very, very impressive looking image here uh, and which we're going to even make better. So that's basically how you can get started using the tool itself. But now let's talk about some tips and tricks that you can use to get the best out of this tool. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is prompting. How do you get this AI tool to generate for you really good looking images and to get it to do exactly what it is that you want. So and how to do this depends on what version of Midjourney you're using. The free version only gives you up to version four and version four likes very descriptive uh, prompts and very precise prompt. So for example, I'm going to go back and type uh, imagine and then I'll start with a monkey wearing an Iron Man suit. So that's the first thing we want to do. So the next thing is that we want to describe the scenery of the monkey. So I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to say in a, I put right there, New York alien invasion. As you see, I just put that as a keyword and I'll put a comma. So now this is probably Iron Man is like a movie. So I want it to be a little bit more cinematic and look like something from a movie. So I'm going to add two more prompts. I would say I want this to be cinematic and I want cinematic lighting in the background. So we get something that looks more like it's from a movie. Now I also want some details, like I want the suits to be more detailed, very sharp and, and it really creeps. So I'll put a uh, highly detailed and ultra detailed. So I've put these two extra prompts right here and let's see what it comes up with. So as you can see, we have images that look a lot better. Look at this. This looks really, really, really amazing. Looks like something that's out of a movie. I can, let's check some of these out. Like this right here, this metallic one could be our villain. You see, this looks like something like from a movie poster that a VFS artist has put together. Looks really, really good. And this other one right here could even be our superhero Iron Man. As you can see, if you look in the background, uh, some of that sort of New York invasion, you can see some smoke, you can see a little bit of chaos. So that's giving us a better looking result. And uh, look at this one here. This looks like a shot for a screenshot or a photo taken out of a movie scene where like the monkeys coming out of an explosion. This is our land and this is our home. We are the apes of justice. If you'd like to see how I animated and created that, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments and I'll probably do a video on that if we have enough interest for that. So just let me know in the comments if you want to see a video on how I created that little animation right there. All right, next, let's do an example to show you how you can create ultra realistic looking human faces. All right, so I'm going to type imagine and then I'll paste this prompt right there. So I've said I want a portrait of a black woman. So this is probably going to be a very close up image. And then I want it to be ultra detailed. I want it to have high contrast and I want it to have very clear facial features so that I want to be able to see the eyes and things like that. And then I can even specify the kind of lens. So if you're a photographer, you can actually specify the kind of lens you want it to use. And I would put the f-stop. So I put an f-stop of 1.8. So we'll probably have like blurry background, some kind of bokeh on there. And then I said, you know, give it some kind of accent lighting. Let's see what it comes up with. Look at that. This is super impressive. Look at how detailed and very realistic these images look. You could probably be scrolling through Instagram and this could be some kind of a model or something and you might not really tell the difference. So this looks very, very realistic and very highly detailed again because I was given very specific and clear prompts. All right. The next thing I want to tell you about are parameters. So there are some additional parameters you can add to your prompt to kind of guide the model on what you're trying to do. There's several of these and I'll put a link down in the description for you to check them out. But the two that I use most often is the version parameter and also the aspect ratio parameter. By default, all your images are always like this square, but sometimes maybe you want to do something for Instagram stories or something for YouTube and you want a different aspect ratio. I'll show you how to do that. 
So let's jump back into the chat but uh, this time around I'll create, I have an animation video coming up so I'm going to create a background for that. So this time around I want to do something very cartoonish. So I'm going to type right here in the prompt, cartoon vector illustration. So this will give me this cartoonish looking like images. And then I've described that I want to see a bright colorful bedroom with a poster of robots on the wall. So now I'm going to put dash dash, that's how you access the version, dash dash V for version. I'll put version 4. If you wanted this to be version 1, 2, 3, you can put that in case you like the style of the models. And then I'm going to put again another dash dash AR. AR stands for aspect ratio. And we're going to use that to generate the aspect ratio. And I'm going to put it at a 16 by 9 so I can use this on a YouTube video. So let's see what it comes up with. Boom. Look at that. Very vibrant, very bright images for what I wanted to do. And you can see the aspect ratio is now in a dimension that I can use on a video like YouTube. So you can play around with this and again, check out the documentation in the description to see more of these examples. All right, next, let's talk about modifying an existing image. So if you will have an image that already exists that you want to add to, uh, the tool can actually do that and I'll show you how that works. So the first thing you need is an image that is available in the internet. You have to upload your image somewhere that the model can access. Discord allows this. If you want your image to be posted in the channel, you can simply click right here at the bottom and click on upload file and then select your image. Uh, once this is uploaded, you want to click on the image itself and right click and just copy image address. But again, you can do this anywhere. If you just upload your image to anywhere that is accessible on the internet, just grab that URL. Now we're going to go back to our prompt engine and I'm going to type imagine and paste the image URL right there. And then I'll describe what it is I wanted to do to the image. In this case, I wanted to create it to be like a Disney pixel character. So as you can see, it's generated that and you can see that the pixel character looks very, very similar to the image that I attached to it. So if you have a base image that you want to modify and you want it to borrow from it, you do it like that and it's quite simple. This is an easy way to kind of like cartoonize yourself or do interesting things with your image. And if you want to see all the kind of commands that the tool has, if you just type a uh, backslash and don't type anything, if you just scroll down on the mid journey, you can see the different things you can do uh, and ask the chat bot. Uh, you can see all of them. You can try them out and see what they do. Uh, another interesting one we're going to try right now is the blend command. This allows you to blend up to five images. And I think this is an actually interesting one to showcase. So let's go ahead and showcase what that does. So I'm going to click on the blend. And then it gives you the option to upload the two images. So I have an image here of an elephant and an image of this eyes place. And I want to kind of blend them. Of course, I could do this on Photoshop. This will probably take me, you know, a couple of minutes to do to composite that and make it look realistic but let's see how good the AI can do this so I'll upload the image of my elephant and upload the image of my eyes place and look at that that is quite impressive within a few seconds I mean that looks pretty good to me not super perfect but really really good uh, so you can see how you can take images and sort of composite them and you can take an image of yourself too and you want to put yourself say in a different background just upload those two images and play around with it and see what the tool does finally if you want to subscribe to the tool simply type backslash subscribe and that gives you the option to open up uh, the subscription page on their website. They have two, uh, three plans. Uh, the cheapest is about $10 a month if you're doing it month to month or $8 if you do it yearly. With this, they do claim you can use the images commercially. Again, I know there's a lot of controversy with AI generated ad, but they do say you can use it commercially and you also have access to about 200 uh, images for the cheapest plan per month and then you have a private access to the chatbot so you can chat with the chatbot privately without having to do it in that public forum but like i mentioned these images will still be visible on the website in the community page so right here i have an example of my own private access to the chatbot and i'm right here you can see everything is all in one place and there's nobody else that i'm competing with trying to locate my images but other than that everything else should still be the same as what you get with the free version or that the fact that you can also use version 5 of Mid Journey now uh, also if you have a paid subscription. All right, that was just scratching the surface. There's a lot more this tool can do and I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on that. So I welcome you to subscribe so you see those when they come out and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if it added any value to you. In the meantime, if you want to see how you can use AI to generate amazing looking animations, that is going to be popping up right here. Check it out. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Make sure you keep learning. Bye-bye.